Hey guys, Mr. 3D Hero here, and in today's video, we will be having a look at flanking, with the do's and don'ts, and the correct way to change the map within your favour. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the video. So flanking is a technique that many people have done within all types of games they've played. So we have COD, Battlefield, Destiny, Killzone, etc. All these maps are, all these games have different maps with different routes and different routes that allow you to change the tide of certain fights. The maps in TF2 vary from open space to closed space, and like the other name games that I just stated, they have um, certain areas where 90% of the um, combat will be occurring. Now in most cases, depending on the map, you may be successful in flanking a whole team, and depending on how well you know the enemy team, it may fall within your favour and push your team up if they're losing, or depending on the situation, it may just help with you winning overall. So today's video I'm going to be giving you like a small guide on how to properly flank because the one problem I see is that there are some games where I'm playing and instead of my team flanking the correct way they will all gather up in one area and face the enemy at in front instead of taking the enemy from behind. Sounds kind of wrong there but instead of us taking the enemy from, from behind, no pun intended, why don't we focus on at least flanking to make the games more favourable and for you to increase the chances of winning instead of you losing the majority of 90% of the times. So let's take a look at Complex, a small but well rounded map that lacks symm symmetrical wall running but has a number of locations where fighting will always be occurring at and also very predictable with situations where you'll always be familiar with. The way that I flank is first I understand who I'm up against. Straight away I'll have a look at the different paths, rather than the same path that my teammates take. Usually I would have another teammate follow me as backup, and that's pretty useful when it comes, out, comes to scouting. The way the map play, plays is that everyone meets in the centre, and usually drift to the dome section, and then to the evac section of the map. And then from that point on there, they either go to the left side to where on Bounty Hunter, where the um, destroyed rubble is, or usually they go back to the middle centre again. There's only, on this type of map, there's only about two to three areas where um, players will always be drifting to. So, in many ways, it kind of plays within your favour, since it doesn't mean you have to take a long route to get there quickly and lose out on the action. Ideally, I avoid the dome section when I, get to, when I get dropped, and start to flank around the debris area, and it doesn't matter which side you spawn on, as each side is effective. The only problem I'll say is that when you do spawn and you go straight to the, near the area where the debris is, um, is that there's a I say a fifty percent chance that another player will be there. Either you have a player with you, or you have a any player on that side. And depending on your luck, if you're not quick enough with reaction time to drop the person, they will take you out, and then they will start flanking your team. And I've seen it happen before; it becomes a landslide at that point. Now when the fighting is occurring, there's a chance that you may see another player flanking you, like I stated. So ideally you want to try to be as quick as possible. And if you do this as quickly as possible, you'll be able to prevent your team from being wiped. If you feel like you're not going to be successful, try and get someone else from your team to follow you. As that way, if you fail, the other person has a guaranteed chance of finishing them off. And if they fail, then, well, you fail. It, not much you can do. Now, do be aware though that this may not happen all the time, depending on your team you're up against. If they're smart, and they're able to predict predict you, they'll stop you from doing it repeatedly. While if they're new players and unexperienced, then you can keep this up as many times as you like. I've come up against, I've come up against um, a few teams where everything will play out normal, and when I start to flank them, there'll at least be maybe one or two players who will be at the back waiting for other players to come up from behind them. Usually they let one person on their team die, but then usually they'll be the ones that will stop anyone else from progressing onto their team. Now those are kind of smart those are the smart players. While they use their main team to take out people from the front and they use a the cannon folder in the middle, they'll have another um, separate team that will stay from behind and watch and make sure that no one else comes. Now Chances of the chances of you seeing those type of teams are kind of like 50 50 at times, unless they're in a clan, then you'll know straight away. When you're going up, when you go up against a group of people who 
aren't in a clan, for example, or you're going up against new players, you can tell straight away if it's a new player with the way they react and such. You will know that you can probably do it as many times as you want. You can flank them, all this and that. Just sometimes the new players will be predictable. New players won't be as predictable sometimes. Sometimes they will, if you do it too many times, sometimes they will start to react by fighting back and kind of laying traps to prevent you from um, from you advancing. Um, a great example would be them using the pilot sentry and putting it from behind them. That way they stop people from moving on and it also gives them indication that they're being attacked from behind. So also, even when you join a match in progress you can always change the tide depending on the outcome. Like Bounty Hunter for example. If the difference is 100 points in bounty, all you generally need to do is make sure that you gain at least 100 points by taking out the, um, taking out the AI. Forget focusing on the pilots, focus on the AI, so the, either the AI titans or the AI um, soldiers. And this way, there's still a guaranteed chance that you can make a comeback. I, it's possible, it's very possible, but sometimes you'll need help. So if that's the case, make sure you switch to a either a titan that's capable of um, crowd control and you switch to a pilot or a pilot class that is ideally set up for long distance and close distance fights. And this way you'll still have a chance. And then also if you are aware, try to take out the high level pilots, the pilots that have say around 200 odd in bounty. Because usually they'll be the ones that be um, the big spenders. If you take them out and you take half the profit, they won't be able to win. Now this rule can also be applied to say attrition as well. Where if you join mid game, you can make a comeback. But sometimes, in some situations, it's not always going to be possible to make a major comeback. Especially if the people you're up against are pros, or at least if you're going up against one person, then you're going to have, you're going to have troubles. So if you have someone that you know is reliable and they'll try to help you as much as you can, try and indicate to them to help you with pushing them back. If not, then just let it happen, there's not really much you can personally do. But in games like say Tracer and Capture the Flag, Hardpoint and say Pilot vs Pilot, you can make comebacks whether you're on your own or whether you're with another teammate. But ideally, try when you're flanking, try and go with other people. Try and get someone else to help you because in team gameplay it's not always effective to go on your own. Sometimes it feels like if you're flanking on your own and you get killed and you keep repeating it over and over again, if it was like you're feeding points to them and if they're able to predict from behind that you're coming, no pun intended, it's it's not always gonna work. So try and indicate to your team that, you know, how about we start flanking from behind and if we can stop them from taking our main team out at the front, we can put a hold on them or better off distract them and by them being distracted, they won't have any way to react. Just just kind of a thought. So that's the end of the video, really. Um, I hope this video did help. I hope it gave you kind of like a general understanding of how of why you should kind of consider flanking. Because like I said, flanking it can really change the tide of the game, whether you're on your own, whether you're with your team, and sometimes you'll need to like think on the spot of how you want to flank. Um, sometimes you won't even need a flank. Sometimes you'll be able to just push up straight away. But in games where it's an absolute slaughter and your team is just keep pushing. Sometimes it only takes one person to change the title of the fight. So that's basically how I kind of think of it, of, of flanking. And I recommend that you try it out some more. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy it, leave a like. If you didn't like it, then leave a dislike. And I hope to see you again soon.